Week 12, waiver wire. Uh, Nothing too sexy on the wire right now, but we got to gear up for championship runs. This is how we start. This is where we tie our laces and take the first step. All right? First step for Thanksgiving is this Justin Jefferson's free square. Okay? If he has one catch, literally .5 receiving yards, he has more than that, you're a winner on prize picks. If you have not yet signed up for prize picks, then you've obviously never watched our videos because we're all in on prize picks, and they are all in on you winning money, literally giving you a free square, .5 receiving yards. If you've never signed up on prize picks, first-time depositors are going to get a 100% deposit match with the promo code BDGE. Go download the app. Link is in the description. First thing down there, when you deposit $10 or more, use BDGE and they'll hit you with double whatever you put down. 10 will get you 20, 40 will get you 80, et cetera, et cetera. Go nail this. And on tomorrow's video, we're going to do a full Thanksgiving slate preview, talking about my predictions for the games, fantasy rankings, best prize picks plays for Thursday to make your Thanksgiving a little bit fuller. All right, week 12 wave of wire. Let's get cracked. <laughs> The running backs are ugly, but there are a couple dudes at the top of the list that I think could be helpful. The obvious one is Samaj P. Ryan out there in Cincinnati because Joe Mixon is in the concussion protocol. Typically with the way the protocol is now set up for this year because they change things a little bit, the player has a more than 50% chance to miss the upcoming game. They play Tennessee, which is a very tough run defense, but Samaj P. Ryan is super involved through the air. So if he does get that full workhorse treatment, which he will if Mixon is gone, he becomes the top waiver wire priority pickup of the week if you need a running back bad which you might not because this is the first week in a minute that there hasn't been any buys so with the thanksgiving slate coming up there are zero buys this week so your team should be at full strength and it would be kind of sad if you had a fantasy football team at full strength and Samaja P. Ryan was your starting running back. But he's obviously a good option because he gets very involved on all three downs, caught three touchdowns just last week alone. And Jamar Chase is probably still out, so the targets are dispersed amongst a smaller group of players. Samaja P. Ryan will be a mid to low end RB2 if Joe Mixon misses time. Him, Latavius Murray, and James Cook are probably the three running backs that I actually care about this week. Latavius Murray took over 17 carries, scored a touchdown. Melvin Gordon got that fucking snip snip. And then And uh, Chase Edmonds also hurt his ankle. So maybe like Mike Boone mixes in. I believe Marlon Mack might be in the situation there. So it's an ugly group right now. And Latavius Murray clearly has the trust of the coaching staff. They go against Carolina, which is obviously a team that you can run against. Big fan of Latavius Murray this week and actually has some longevity to uh, himself as a fantasy player. He's obviously not nothing special as a talent. But if you're going to get the workhorse role in an offense, he's usable going forward. Flex, you know, there are more bye weeks going forward, right? They might not have any this week, but weeks 13 and 14. 14, there are still players that do have buys, so you will need fill in. So Latavius Murray, James Cook, got a lot of work last week, has has looked really efficient on the limited sample size of work that he's had this year. Obviously, Singletary is the early down guy. If something happens to Singletary, James Cook will be the number one waiver wire priority pickup for that week. They also play against Detroit, all right? This could be a game where Buffalo is nine point favorites, even on the road in Detroit. This shit gets away from him, and James Cook gets another double digit number of carries or touches in general. So I think James Cook has some sneaky flex play uh, viability this week, as well as he's someone that I want to have as like a handcuff throughout the playoffs right now. Outside of that, you're, you know, you have guys that you're not excited about whatsoever. You're like, maybe there are good handcuffs. Maybe the guy in front of them will get hurt. Maybe I can get excited about these dudes in like six weeks. Like Cam Akers got a big workload, but I'm expecting Matt Stafford to miss time. And I don't want to running back in that offense whatsoever. Same thing with like Kyron Williams, who's a little bit more involved. But again, the upside is just so capped in that offense. Alexander Madison, if he's available, you all know the deal for the last four years. Jerick McKinnon's very involved in the passing game. And now Clyde Edwards Hilaire is dealing with an ankle injury. So now it's more of a two-man committee between Pacheco and McKinnon, but still McKinnon's weekly upside has been very, 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 very embarrassing if he's in your fantasy lineup. Isaiah Spiller has played the number two to Austin Eckler, so if you're an Eckler owner and you want to handcuff him, I don't even know if he's the right guy because Josh Kelly is designated to return from IR. So the running back situation is bleak this week outside of P. Ryan, Latavius Murray, and James Cook. However, on the flip side, the wide receivers are plentiful, all right? We have Traylon Burks coming off of career-high game, seven catches, 111 yards for Tennessee. is taken over as the one there, and this is what we've been waiting for all year. So he is my number one waiver pickup for 
this week as it relates to the wide receiver position. And I would probably drop, you know, 15 to 20% of fab on him if I have anything left at this point. If I'm looking for a wide receiver that could have a breakout appeal over the second half of the year, there's also Donovan's People Jones, who's been wildly, one of the most wildly consistent players in fantasy over the last month, month and a half. I'm not going to exaggerate how good he is. I'm not, I'm not going to like go out of my fucking way to get him on my team because realistically, week in, week out, Yes, you can continue to rattle off like he's had 50 yards every game, but he typically has like 50 to 70 yards. And at the end of the day, it's going to get you eight, nine points. Obviously usable, but he's a wide receiver three. He's been consistently a wide receiver three. He did finally get in the end zone last week. They do have Deshaun Watson coming back in week 13. So the upside will be a little bit higher going forward. He is the number two guy on this list for me, followed right behind him, Darius Slayton. Darius Slayton and Donovan's People Jones are very, very similar to me right now. They are both like really good top of the line receiving options in their respective offenses. Obviously, DPJ has Amari Cooper to deal with, but Darius Slayton, now with Wondell Robinson out for the year with the torn ACL, has taken over. And he had another big game last week, a season high 10 targets. And he's like the only passing option in this offense. Behind him, they have, you know, Kenny Galladay and like Marcus Johnson and it's fucking Hodgins. It's, 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 it's a terrible, disgusting, embarrassing group of wide receivers. And Daniel Jones needs someone to throw the ball to. So they play Dallas on Thanksgiving. Uh, Slayton seems like he's a guy who's going to be the one for the remainder of the year. And right now, Daniel Jones is not playing terribly you know he's not he's, he's okay he's moving the offense Saquon's helping the offense move down the field so they're getting more opportunities so I like Darius Slayton the upside comes with a dude like Jameson Williams who was activated to return in the 21 day window does not mean he is playing this week against Buffalo on Thanksgiving I would be surprised if he does but Jameson Williams is going to be the field stretcher for this Detroit offense Amon Ra is obviously the slot guy but Jameson Williams should be back on the field for hopefully weeks 13 but if not 14 15 16 17 and maybe he has a little bit of a breakout obviously this is a very tight window he has a very short leash uh very narrow edges here to make things happen for you which is why he's you know at like fourth or fifth on this list because the likelihood of him breaking out gets smaller and smaller with each week that he does not return because he's going to have to get up to game speed he's going to have to start to see more than like 30 50 60 percent of snaps in order for him to be someone that you could put into your fantasy lineup but obviously it's good news that he's designated he's, he's taken the 10 months to recover fully from the ACL and everything sounds good Paris Campbell sounds good looks good he's been Matt Ryan's clear number two target and sometimes out producing Michael Pittman in the four games that Paris Campbell has played with Matt Ryan he has been extremely fantasy usable going over 70 80 90 yards scoring touchdowns sometimes they play against Pittsburgh this week so Paris Campbell is another dude that I really really like on the waiver wire this week so you have a lot of options at wide receiver to fill into your lineup if you need somebody Burks DPJ Darius Slayton uh, Paris Campbell even further down like Demarcus Robinson I know he's not legit by most standards in fantasy but he always seems he seems right now way more legit than like the Devin Duvernay flash in the pan a few weeks ago where we we're like he's going to be the one he's a fucking punt returner kick returner he was never going to be the wide receiver one Demarcus Robinson looks a lot more clearly like the uh the dude out here in Baltimore so I kind of like Demarcus Robinson it's just him and Mark Andrews right now with Rashad Bateman out Nico Collins has presented himself pretty well also since Cooks has had his little like outburst I'm not playing for the team stripped the captain shit from me so Nico Collins is another guy that I think you could throw into your lineup uh Terrace Marshall and eh. that's really all I would look at as it relates to the wide receivers maybe Jarvis Landry if you want to get a little cute but I feel like if he doesn't score a touchdown more often than not he's going to give you 30 to 40 yards same thing with Jawan Johnson as we move over to the tight ends if Taysom Hill is somehow still available he's the number one guy got really involved last week I think he had like nine carries 50 something yards came out and said that they've been underutilizing him which tells me that he's going to start getting more and more touches as the season goes by Jawan Johnson same team same position sort of uh, has scored a touchdown in like 75 straight games all right I'm gonna stop betting against him he's just gonna keep scoring touchdowns he is so involved in the red zone all right well he scored a touchdown in three straight games but he scored five touchdowns in the last five games which is insane Prior to these last five games, he had a total of four touchdowns in 24 games. So Juwan Johnson, big part of that offense, obviously. Trey McBride had his first game last night, uh, Monday Night Football for Arizona. I think he caught like all four of his targets for 18, 20 yards or something like that. So not heavily involved, but he's also a rookie. So it's going to take him some time to get acclimated, take over that Zach Ertz role. So I'm not like you know, super excited about him. I'm not excited about really anyone on the waiver wire at tight end this week. Defensively, though, I talked about this in yesterday's Monday live stream. If Kansas City is available on your waiver wire, 
you actually want to spend fab on him. This is like one of the few defenses throughout the year that I would say is worth spending the money on. They play the Rams. They're at home. They're like 14 point favorites. They're going to get a ton of pressure. Matt Stafford, unlikely to play this week, unlikely to play for a minute. So KC, awesome. Miami versus Houston at home. Another awesome streamer. I like the Jets against Chicago. We'll see what happens with Justin Fields. He's day to day. Maybe he doesn't play. Maybe he does. Maybe he's limited. Jets at home. Uh, Washington at home against Atlanta. Minnesota at home against New England. Even like that. And then Baltimore at Jacksonville. Those are my favorite streaming options in order. But KC, number one priority. Miami, number two priority. You are my number one priority, which is why I'll be bike tomorrow for Wednesday's video. If you support the brand, if you support the channel, if you want to make some fucking money, please go over to PrizePix, prizepix.com, or download the app. First link in the description. They've got the Justin Jefferson free square. It's free money for you. Thursday Night Football, spice up your Thanksgiving. I know turkey sucks, turkey's bland, but let us put a little seasoning. Let us put some Lowry's on that shit for you. Justin Jefferson, 0.5 receiving yards. Hit the button that looks like this if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I shall see y'all tomorrow. Love you.